Hello everybody, my name is Artur Skowreski and today I will have an opportunity to talk a bit about blockchain for Before I will start the main topic, a bit about me, I'm working in the, okay, this uh, in the virtual company, we are Scala Software House, we are Startup Scala Software House, currently we have also some Java projects, but still Scala is deep in our, our hearts. But in my expertise, I spent some time in the blockchain work. Uh, blockchain, uh, blockchain work. Do you still remember 2017? The year when we were still able to walk around the streets and conferences weren't canceled or remote. I just barely remember 2017 because I spent better half of that year filling that notebook. I have it with me, and as I can show you, it's not proud. And through that year, I was reading, learning, and knowing everything I could find about the distributed ledgers I could. As you see there, I, the, one of the guys that still use the standard paper, the standard paper and standard pen. It was due to the fact that I think we try to call ourselves engineers. But sometimes I consider software development fashion industry. Because I think this quote best describes what was happening in 2017. Everybody was talking about Bitcoin, everybody was talking about blockchains, and I was also in that trend, in that hype trend. Around there was articles like the United Nations start to blockchain to serve self work hunger. Like to see cancel with blockchain computing also seems like possibility. I suppose nowadays, if we would still be hyped for blockchain, there would be articles about coronavirus uh, cured by the blockchain or distributed ledgers. And you know, know what? I checked for the internet and I found one. So it's still happening. Okay, why is that? Why we think that blockchain can solve every other problems? I think the best description would be termed hype. In the Urban Dictionary, its description looks like that. A fact, a clever marketing strategy, which a product advertises a thing everyone must have to the point where people begin to feel they need to consume it. If I change just few words, I think everybody could relate to it. It's like that also in our industry. There is even better description of hype, in my opinion. Have you heard about Gartner? Gartner is software consulting, which coined quite interesting curve. It's a curve of hype in the technology space. It looks like that. Each technology, each new technology starts on so-called innovation trigger. The curve is going ex with expectations up, up, up. Then it receives peak of inflated expectations. The peak when everybody thinks that uh, blockchain, for example, would solve the world hunger. And then when we realize that it's not that easy, it's falling down. It's falling down through nearly to initial level when everybody starts to see that they were plainly naive to put some, such amount of trust to given technology. And then some of the, of the technologies received their reputation again, regain it, and are receiving some points on the plateau, the plateau of productivity. There is even specific uh, curve created for everything in the blockchain space. You need, we need to remember one thing about the Gartner curve. Not each technology will even reek peak of implied expectation through of the instrument and just barely of them will ever achieve plateau of productivity. Majority will just get out of the trace. So having my smart notebook, I decided 
after those three years, check what really happened with all those hype tools. Play myself, play becoming detective, and try out to find out what resultly all those inflated expectations resulted with. Let's start with the ICOs. I don't, I don't know if you know the term ICOs. If somebody never heard about it, it's like venture capital. It was ability to gain funding for the blockchain startup. And in 2017, there were five big ICOs. Filecoin, Tezos, Ethereum, Lab, the Banco Protocol, and Polkadot. Each of them received a lot of funding. So a lot of people thought that it's good to invest in given companies. I decided to start my small investigation with checking what happened with that. Let's start with Filecoin. Filecoin is blockchain-based data storage. It's simply saying just Google Drive on OneDrive, just on the blockchain. When you store your data not in the centralized cloud, but in people, other people's computers, of course, in the encrypted way. And company that created Filecoin also have behind one quite interesting project. IPFS, so-called interplanetary file system. It's ability to just use every connected computer as a distributed file storage. It's especially, especially interesting that it has some usages. For example, uh, it was used by Catalan government when they tried to get the independence, independence, independence from Spain. And it was a time when Spain had lesser problems than today. Filecoin goal was to be some kind of payment uh, vehicle for IPFS. For it was achieve, it was going to achieve ability to pay for other people's storage. It gained nearly a quarter of a billion of dollars of funding, and the truth is, it's still not there. This is article from the beginning of this year. The new schedule was created. Filecoin is, was planned in the February of this year, was planned to be released in the third quarter of this year. We will see if that will ever happen. So, okay, after three years, the biggest of the ICO never flourished. So, also it's also, its price fallen down. So, even with such interesting project like IPFS, I think it makes nothing that they probably should go far, far better. Let's see on the second project, Tezos. And Tezos is really geeky, really technical one, because Tezos promised a better alternative to the Ethereum or blockchain, not Bitcoin. It was promised as the blockchain for the developers, where you can use functional languages or other way of uh, build that they consider better than Solidity, standard language of the Ethereum. Also received nearly quarter of billion of funding and currently is still developed. Like you see on this slide, a lot of companies is using it, but probably that isn't that aren't companies that you consider the first, first class one. Rather, no big player. And recently, a few days ago, the first game was built on the Tezos blockchain. So few projects, nothing really interesting one. Once again, for a quarter of billion, nothing really great. It lost, it's just a quarter of their initial pricing. So, once again, nothing to be excited of. Next project, third one, Cilin Lab. This one is interesting piece because Cilin Labs is a technology company that promised us to create blockchain phone. So, 
create fund that is also wallet for the cryptocurrencies. Their initial approach was 16,000 Android form cost, sorry, called Solarin that Verge called the most ridiculous Android form. Of course, that was just the original approach in 2016. In 2017, they received more than uh, 150 uh, $50 million dollars and they created that. It's so-called flannel, funny, sorry, it's called funny. It was costed $900 uh, and barely anybody bought it. To the level that in the April, about a year ago, in the April 2018, their mother company like quarter of this stuff. And currently they are focusing on developing their blockchain-based smartphone OS. The most interesting thing in Steering Lab is the fact how much valuation they lost. They started in $3.50 and currently their single token is not worth even one cent. I don't know, even know how to call that number. So I think it's best describing current state of this company. So definitely fail is best description of this project. Fourth one, Banker Protocol. And Banker Protocol is a project that promised us to create blockchain-based marketplace when you, for example, could put every, nearly everything like cars, like homes, and all the contracts that were uh, created through Banker Protocol, they were promised to be as valid as a standard legal one. They started with a great funding. The promises were very, I would say, high. Expectations were high. Unfortunately, in the uh, July of 2018, they were hacked. They had security breach and they were were compromised. Initially, there wasn't no how much amount was stolen. Then, in a few days later, it was known that it was $12 million. It was just one tenth of the initial funding, but people lost trust. You probably don't want to use the tool that is not secure enough for putting your home and losing it by some error with the smart, in the smart contract. So, Banker also lost majority of the evaluation. It's 16 cents now, starting from the whooping $10. So I definitely don't see a direct future for the project. Hey, hey, once again. And finally, Polkadot. And Polkadot is a bit more cheerful one because Polkadot was promised, it was also a geeky project, it, was, it had promised to create intermediation layer between different blockchains. Because the fact is, it's really hard to transfer funds between blockchains without using real world money. They promised to create layer connecting different distributed ledgers. And what is similar to the case of Bancor is the fact that from the initial funding, $150 million, due to error in the wallet, they lost 100 million. Even with that, they still managed to create projects. In July 2019, they started with Alpha. And after that, they announced second ICO. And their second ICO once again brought 60 million. By selling 5% tokens, they received 60 million, which stated them on the valuation of 1 billion, 20 million, uh, 12, 200 million dollars. So they definitely are once again in the game. And recently, the tokens that people bought in 2018 are, they are able to start to use them. Polkadot is not yet ready. 
But from the all the projects I'm showing you today, this one since 2018, because like I said, there was second ATO, still achieving initial valuation. So definitely not great, but also not terrible. Let's wait for what will happen when project really took off, will, will really take off. Okay, I was saying a bit about the ICOs. Let's focus on the probably the goldest boy of the whole trend, Ethereum. To say about state of the Ethereum, let's travel through its history. Original version of Ethereum created in 2014 was called Frontier. It was just barbon version of the project that was, I would say, technical spec. And after some initial ideas, new version was created. Ethereum was forked and in March 2016, switched from the Frontier branch to Homestead branch. Homestead, if you were in the blockchain space in 2017, Homestead is exact version that you focused on. But of course, to all these years, the years, that's not the only edition of Ethereum that was pre presented. Next, on the roadmap, there was big Metropolis release. And it, this release was split to, to, into parts. The first one, produced in the, pre presented in the October 2017, was Byzantium. And Byzantium you know, was preparing, was uh, putting a stepping uh, step stone for the future version of the Ethereum. It was creating some uh, more, bringing a bit of scalability, bringing a bit of uh, some needed feature when Ethereum started to be a popular project. Like I'm saying, it's still 2017. We are in the peak of the hype. But it was just the first part of the Metropolis tree. The other one was Constantinople. And Constantinople caught some delight. Initial version was promised in the February 2019. It didn't happen then. It was postponed six months. And finally, in the June 2018, we were able to see Constantinople live. The truth is, it wasn't Constantinople that was initially promised. Because with Constantinople, there was plan for so-called uh, difficulty bump. Because as probably everybody who got interested in the blockchains know, standard algorithm proof of work is based off on calculating very difficult hashes. For creating such a hash, for calculating it, finding it, you are received with the coins. Ethereum was based on exact same uh, rules, but they knew that proof of work is not feasible solution for the future. So they decided that their, their blockchain need to have some time limit for proof of work algorithm. It was so-called difficulty bomb. After specific hash, specific point of time, difficulty bomb will trigger and make receiving new coins very, very difficult. They made that because they knew that the future is not proof of work, but proof of stake. A better, more community-driven algorithm of uh, staking your token. Like I said, it was initially delayed for one year in the February 2012, 2018. And in the real, in the perfect world, we already would be on the far more difficult Ethereum. Unfortunately, the work of our uh, next edition of Ethereum called Serenity was delayed again. So in January 2012, difficulty bump was once again postponed. Like I said, we are currently waiting for the Serenity. 
serenity is going to pre prove, uh, bring with itself so-called uh, proof of stake. It is called Ethereum to zero by Vitalik Buteniuk, creator of Ethereum, and it promised to be released soon. We will see if that will really happen. So I think Ethereum, once again, it's also something that we can call not very terrible. Ethereum is still developed. It's not the project that's stagnated and uh, is not properly developed. Unfortunately, currently, it should be in far, far more, more better shape. Interesting thing is so-called Truffle. Truffle is a framework that is created to develop applications of Ethereum. It has a few thousand of stars. It's rather well also in rather good shape. It was started when everybody got hyped around blockchains. Through the ages, they partnered with big companies like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. And recently, Truffle in 2000, June 2018 become, became partner of the Microsoft to the level that currently Azure Blockchain Service is partially, which is partially uh, based on the Ethereum, treat Truffle as their first class citizen. So quite success for a smart project to become a partner of the Microsoft. But there's one more interesting thing in the, uh, in the Truffle. Starting with Ethereum, after some time, they started to, they tried to target other blockchains. Beyond them, Hyperledger. And Hyperledger is the last project I'm going to describe today. Hyperledger is very interesting because this is blockchain that is baked by the Linux Foundation and some other companies like VMware, Red Hat, Intel, IBM. It's umbrella startup for multiple projects that are going to bring block support for blockchains for big consortium, for corporations, for companies. Because let's say the truth. There is a problem with uh, Ethereum of Bitcoin. Probably no company wants to put their assets on such blockchains, public ones, because what companies are really interested in is permission, uh, is making control, is having control who is able to see which assets. That's the standard in every corporate uh, software. It's okay until you can be very quick bringing new features before you start to targeting big company. After that, you spend majority of your time fighting with uh, some permission level. And that taking really, really huge amount of time. So what Hyperledger is about, is about creating blockchain that will be open enough and permission enough, uh, permissioned enough for companies to really use. And its poster tried to so-called Hyperledger fabric it's ability software to create your own blockchain on which you can create your own programs, your own software, code in the standard computer languages like Python, Java, Node.js, JavaScript in case. They have some pro frameworks, it's uh, rather simple to start with. And due to that fact, it partnered with Amazon. Amazon has a solution that is called Amazon Managed Blockchain. And currently, it's bringing ability to easy start hyperledger fabric plainly on the Amazon. Ethereum coming, you probably see that Ethereum coming soon on the right side. Unfortunately, Ethereum coming soon is there since 2018 when Amazon uh, managed blockchain are, were initially announced and still we don't see it. 
Even with that hyperledger, there's some problem because currently we have hyperledger public 2.0 and there is no announcement from Amazon that they want to allow putting them on the Amazon Web Services. Okay, so I will be wrapping up. Hyperledger is also in okay shape, nothing that good like Truffle, but uh, still I consider that being a first season of the Amazon Web, Servi Web Services is quite effective. Wrapping up, when I started to create this presentation, I thought that blockchain space will be a just wait soon. Because you probably don't hear much about it in the public uh, discussion in the internet. There's not that big flood of the articles you have seen in 2017. But I it was happy to realize that there are still people having great time developing solutions based on the distributed ledgers. So I see that probably I need to once again try to open my notepad and fill it up with the new knowledge. It will become, I suppose in 2012, there will be still few interesting projects to keep on with. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Arthur. Uh, I uh, review it uh, again, once again. Uh, mm -hmm. The tricky question, uh, do you have that notebook with you right now? Uh, this uh, green one. Yeah, I have my green one. <laughs> oh, it's great. Nice. Okay, the, the question. Uh, you said that uh, as far as I understood, uh, Hyperledger mm -hmm. is uh, uh, modern as the most acknowledged uh, tool for blockchain development. Uh, mm, am I right? It, no, not exactly that. Uh -huh. It's the tool that is going to target big corporations, big companies. Because Hyperledger, like I said uh, on my presentation, maybe I will elaborate, elaborate about it a bit, uh, decided that, you know, a whole blockchain and distributed ledger trend, trend was uh, focused on the distributed way of computing, being it free without centralized organization, everything like that. And that's okay for the, a lot of businesses, not for each of them. Because mm -hmm. corporation cannot allow themselves to just open all the data. Of course, yeah. there are some, some ways to cope with that, like for example, uh, Vic Snark and other uh, zero knowledge proofing. So, but still, it's just hide it or not hide it. What corporations want, they want to have traceability that blockchain gives, because blockchain gives great stability. It's yeah. really hard to mess with data. Still, it's allowing you to, uh, they want to decide what person have access to which part of data. And that's mm -hmm. what they are doing with the one hyper age is targeting. Because in this way, for example, everybody, every user has its own key and that private key can be used to just have access to administrate or read specific part of data, kind of data. Hyperledger is still growing. It's something that uh, Amazon, like I said, Amazon is betting on it. It is, Linux Foundation is betting on it. And it has a lot of different projects because apart of the one that is standard one like Fabric, there are, for example, blockchains for the mobile devices, something mm -hmm. for the IoT. So like with Linux distribution, something for each use case. So recently, like I also said, uh, for example, there's a Ethereum compatible blockchain on the Hyperledger umbrella project. Mm -hmm. So they are currently, I would call Hyperledger something that is uh, uh, under like that. It's something that uh, Linux Foundation bet on. I think it's the best description of what it put into under the Hyperledger umbrella. So mm -hmm. it's still growing. There's, the truth is like with each other blockchain pro uh, project, there's no real big production issues after a few years because we can we hear that some banks are experimenting with it there are some ico that are better or worse shape 
still no big, I would say, groundbreaking use case, apart of Bitcoin, because of Bitcoin is still with us, flourished. We are still waiting for it, because there's, with whole blockchain, there's a problem with all smart contracts, but I don't know if you want to hear about, because that's the bigger problem, because standard blockchain, it's totally fine in this use case, just used as a database. database. So mm -hmm. it's funny yeah. because, you know, uh, it's dropping replacement, for example, for Oracle or Cobalt, nothing more in that situation, nothing fancy, just uh, corporate storage. Then mm -hmm. what is giving real power are smart contracts. So mm -hmm. ability to create self-automated program on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with DAOs, there are problems because each program needs to, it needs to have input. And for smart contracts, if you want to have it in, executed in a really secure way, all the information needs to rely on the given blockchain. Because in case, for example, if you need to receive information from the external source, you cannot trust it. You can trust only those what you already have in blockchain because this one, that is crypto, -clear, crypto yeah. graphically secured, signed. That's mm -hmm. why, for example, Polkadot is such an important project because they want to introduce interoperability. For example, there will be specific blockchain for mm -hmm. the business trends. There will be specific blockchain, for example, it's very standard for uh, some kinds of the lawyer stuff, for the uh, other business domains so of very specialized blockchain that could be interconnected mm -hmm. and uh, prove with each other that they really, uh, the information is really truthful. Truthfully. Also, there's the ideas like, for example, Gnosis, that information, everybody is voting on the given information as crowdsourcing truth. So, for example, voting for the information. Mm, yeah. So, if, if, if you are voted like the majority, you are getting paid. If you are voting against it, uh, you are not getting So, there is incentive to stay in the truth something that other people will also say. Of course, it can be gamed. So a lot of interesting game theory started happening there. So Hyperledger is uh, the most con of the pros on the Hyperledger is fact that it has really good tooling for the development because for years, for example, Composer is very nice framework that uh, allow you to introduce uh, blockchain to your technology stack with traditional language, like for example, Node.js or Java easily. There's even if I for Scala, if I remember, I remember correctly. Uh, and it's uh, baked by Amazon, but not baked very much because currently Amazon have this managed blockchain, but it's not promoting it much. Uh, probably the, the good use cases need to flourish for big consortium like or other cloud providers will invest a lot in it. And then I suppose it will get more popular because the problem with blockchain is the fact that it's really hard to set it up. Yeah, yeah. And not so many companies understand uh, gains from blockchain technology. Yeah. They think about it like, uh, you said it, like new database, uh, how it works. But you said uh, the use case with um, access restriction. Am I right? Is uh, access restriction is implemented uh, on cryptographical level. So if I don't have proper key, I can't even decrypt proper data. Yeah, it's like uh -huh. exactly like that. So your key, your key, key uh, cryptographic key is giving you a specific amount of permission. So if you lose it, lose it, you are losing it. That's also one of the big problems because people sometimes lose their passwords. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> And if you lose your cryptographic key, you can lose access to the vital data. So yeah. that's one of the additional social problems of the blockchain. We need to be uh, careful with what, how we use computers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, could you name some uh, successful use cases, commercial successful use cases of blockchain in your okay. career or around you? In my career, we are yeah. working on the platform that is helping uh, signing recruitment contract on the blockchain. Maybe that's something, I don't know if I can say that. So maybe that, that maybe let's cut it from the video. <laughs> okay, but I'm saying we are working on something like that. There are a few cases in the uh, travel, transferring funds way. So a lot of uh, cantors, things like that, uh, exchanges. 
that's also something that is flourishing. Majority of cases, uh, the IoT is also quite interesting way of funding. For example, that you are can uh, IOTA itself is an uh, interesting project because it, for example, you are investing on uh, some kinds of the sensors and you can sell, sell data. If your data are valuable, somebody is buying it and it can be automated through as this uh, cost, um, marginal cost of the one data point is very small, but it's possible to be introduced if you have proper blockchain for that. It's problematic because uh, blockchain was promising that the cost of transaction will be low. It isn't to the level that I remember the headlines from the past that blockchain conference uh, cannot be, you cannot pay in blockchain, in the Bitcoin, to the Bitcoin conference because it's too, uh, too big transaction cost because uh, everybody was in blockchain has limited capability, unfortunately. You, they, it was to be two bit price for the transaction. I remember in the highest point of the uh, fee on the uh, Bitcoin, it was you pay by coffee, paying by coffee, you are paying another coffee of fee. But that Bitcoin is, uh, yeah. uh, when it's skyrocketed, uh, everybody understood that it's not uh, more just a currency, it's uh, some kind of gold, new gold. Not everybody. That was exactly Many, uh, a lot of yeah. people. A lot of people, exactly. That was a, one of the big uh, problems because uh, the fork of the blockchain, blockchain gold, uh, Bitcoin gold, it was exactly like that because there were a group of people that wanted, wanted to use it as a transfer uh, via standard uh, payment mechanism, and other people were treated as a gold, something we are storing in uh, a safe and just having there for the worst times, like for example. COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Unfortunately, during those times, Bitcoin also falls. So it's funny observing how this promise is keeping. It kept, it isn't truly set, but we are just starting. So maybe it will skyrocket once again. We don't know that. We don't know how market will behave. Uh, I believe it, it will skyrocket. It's a matter of mm -hmm. time, uh, but uh, not this year, not maybe the next year, but uh, okay. in exactly. a decade. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so too. Okay. One more question about sure. smart contracts. Mm -hmm. um, I heard a lot of stories uh, when people made a mistake in smart contracts and lost uh, a lot of their funds uh, cryptographically. Uh, what is the best way to secure your software? For instance, as for me, uh, Advanced languages like uh, Idris or might be Agda, mm -hmm. they are ideal for such uh, use cases because uh, your mm -hmm. software could be formally proven and you would never lost your funds. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, okay, it's uh, exactly, do you remember Tezos uh, I was talking about during presentation? It's exactly the selling point. They want to use languages that are formally proved uh, functional one uh, to prove the contract works because problem with Ethereum and Solidity is the fact that their contracts are created with semi-general purpose language and it's really easy to get messed. And if you make mistake, it's no you cannot roll back because it's already on the blockchain and you cannot do anything with that. Uh, so Tezos is exactly doing the want to create formally and is doing that partially. Uh, I don't know what specific language is used, but they, uh, they want to create formally a verified contract that you know you'd never made a mistake. So if you're looking for something like that, Tezos is making that promise. Uh, can, I, could I, can I use it to use uh, Hyperledger? Because uh, my reasoning is to be based mm -hmm. on uh, common foundations. Don't use something exotic, something fancy. So Hyperledger is a basement. Uh, mm -hmm. So how to make next step? So set up Hyperledger. Okay. I'm not sure. The truth is I'm not sure if you can use, probably not yet, at least because I never heard about the, uh, we can check that later maybe, I will contact, but I never heard about the Tezos compatible Hyperledger. Hyperledger is for, Hyperledger, funny way of Hyperledger is that, that on Hyperledger we are able 
to roll back in transactions because it's not using blockchain stuff. It's using so-called buyability, distributed, not kind of, yeah. It's using different, maybe not blockchain, but they are not using standard proof of work mechanisms. Uh, they are using uh, Byzantine consensus. So if majority of nodes agree that something is true, it is true. Something generated not it. If the, I don't know if you heard about the problem of Byzantine generals from the IP theory. It's quite interesting one because it's problem, if you, it's problem that happened during uh, creation of the first, uh, first uh, spacecraft. Because you don't, you cannot, if for example, you have three sensors and one of them is giving you, the, if one of them is not working, that's not the problem because you have redundancy. The problem happens if one of them is giving you other information than the rest of them. So one of them is faulty. You need to have algorithms that allow you to decide if you have different information from different sources, what is the truth. And there is a whole category of the algorithm that is doing exactly that. And Hyperledger is, uh, is based on them, not on the proof of work, not on the calculating hashes. So if you, for example, are a corporation and you have controversial nodes and each node agree that we should fork and change that information, you can't do that. So it's additional safety measure. So that's also something that is more helpful for a company because you can make a mistake. It's hard to recover from it, but it's possible. On the public blockchain, only, you, only thing you can do is fork. And the fork, uh, for fork, you need to contact with the whole amount of people that are not connected, you don't have contact with, uh, and that's really hard stuff. For example, Ethereum, when, the, like you said, there was problem that yeah, the fund was stopped yeah. and they made a fork. But uh, community split is on that. In the uh, corporation, you probably can do that by just some real world agreement that we are forking now. It's easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great blockchain world. That's okay. Great. Thank you. Maybe uh, at first, a uh, small comment about uh, languages. Uh, Mm -hmm. and blockchain uh, that uh, uh, problem that usual languages is Turing complete and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can't uh, do something uh, prove something for Turing complete languages uh, so uh, any essential safe languages will be Turing complete so mm -hmm. it uh, it will not run on uh, hyperledger with go or uh, with uh, usual yeah. languages yes and um, uh, uh, also uh, uh, exist such a system as cardano blockchain uh, mm -hmm. they have a research center in uh, kharkiv and they okay, would like, nice to, uh, and nice uh, they have language which is based on Haskell, mm -hmm. and uh, they trying to uh, uh, do exactly what they trying to express financial contract uh, uh, on their language, which are not uh, Turing safe. A problem that uh, for two or three years they advance it, but uh, not uh, as. Uh, in such case that uh, uh, programmer can just get on the end user one. No, so it okay. get, but <laughs> no, what do you want? <laughs> so, okay. the current stage, yes. Can you write it, uh, its name to me? Because I definitely want to check it. Uh, yes, yes, okay. uh, I will write it on uh, a Slack channel with... Uh, okay, thank with, you. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Cardano, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, calm down. I met these guys, uh, they are awesome. <laughs> they are fun. Oh. When I've okay, been... I get it, I got it. Good yes, they're famous <laughs> because one of the uh, creators of Haskell uh, is mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, uh, his advisor. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. It's huge space. Thank you very much. I'm also learning about it. So great to hear from you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Guys, what I found, I found a GitHub page uh, which named Blockchain Graveyard. 
a lot of crypto projects. A lot of it. A lot of it. Like I said, I was going through all the new information about the biggest project and nearly each of them at least didn't uh, pro release what they promised. Majority of them is currently dead. Because like with each hype, there was gold rush. Everybody wanted to be a part of community. You were giving, like an example, one of the uh, funniest blockchain stories was the fact that you, for example, could uh, fund uh, avocado plantation. So you were avocado coin, yeah. So it was looking like that, that uh, you are funding the avocado coins and then you can exchange that avocado coins to the avocados that were planted uh, and grow up due to money you put on the blockchain. <laughs> So that kind of investment, because I feel it's quite interesting because it's allowing people to invest money without being, being a big investor. Because it's for the, if you want to invest the smaller companies, at least in the USA, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not sure exactly, I don't want to say untrue, but far as I know, it's working like that, that uh, in the moment when you want to invest in the early stage companies, it's about, you need to, have at least $1 million of the covers or something like that. So if you're a small investor, you cannot do that. On the ICO, you can. You can have thousands of bucks that you're just putting on the given blockchains waiting for the dividend. Fun, the funny part is maybe not funny, is fact that those all regulations happened because in the past, everybody can could invest in everything. And there was a lot of proud people were losing money that's why currently only people that have the pillow, they are allowed to invest in early stage, very risky investment. So we are making the same mistakes, I don't mistakes, maybe they're not missing, maybe I'm with everything informed, but we are trying the same mechanism again. So just everybody can invest everything, but due to that, a lot of blockchains on the graveyard. Uh, but, uh... As far as I understood, mm -hmm. I heard a lot of people from uh, finance world mm -hmm. and they said that uh, blockchain is a financial future because mm -hmm. a lot of mechanism financial, they are quite uh, inertic. Mm -hmm. so they, they not develop such a fast in the world. And blockchain uh, can bring not just guarantee to financial operations, mm -hmm. uh, but also in new tools. As far as I know, uh, even in the New York uh, trading, uh, New York trading, Birsha, how to say it in English, I can't. So New York okay, trading. Okay, stock. Stock. Okay, stock. Okay, stock. okay, yeah, stock, stock, stock market, yes, definitely, mm -hmm. yes. Even a uh, big stock market, because they are quite old. For instance, uh, 30 years old, they use uh, not just a technology, of the past. Mm -hmm. They also use financial instruments of the past. And a lot of uh, young financial stock markets, they are way more advanced mm -hmm. for different financial tools. So people uh, believe financial financial world that blockchain is the future, uh, which can give us a lot of financial tools. Mm -hmm. Strong financial tools. Okay. But so, it's uh, okay. far away for a while. Or yeah, maybe. exactly. We are on the beginning of the track. For the internet to really get big value, it took 10 years or something, even more probably, before it really skyrocketed. Yeah, Initially, yeah, it was yeah. just the tool for the passionate, passionate people that were standing. So maybe it's that the moment. If you are talking about the big uh, banks and financial institutions, for example, Ripple is interesting uh, blockchain because it's allowing for uh, interbank transactions. Because in the past, banks uh, were transferring money between them in the uh, specific period, for example, three times a day, it's called Elixir in Poland. I'm not sure it's the code like that in each country, uh, but there are sessions like that where bank is uh, transferring money between them. Uh, it's costly because it's a huge amount of money. They need to be, it needs to be treated, treated with safety. Uh, currently, a lot of uh, such transfers starting to be done through the blockchain because uh, you have a proof that that money was transferred between you. And in majority of cases, you don't need to see that money. You just need to have verification that such money transfer happened. 
because that's such big amount. I'm uh, giving you one million of uh, dollars. You are giving one million uh, hundred, and uh, in the long run, it probably will flatten a bit. We just need to have a proof that such a transaction happened. No real money transfer needs to be executed. Yeah, and for example, Ripple is used for interbank communication for a much cheaper way than in the standard uh, standard financial mechanism. Yes, I heard about Ripple. It was quite uh, interesting uh, investment during Skyrocket. Yeah, all the blockchain. And it's it's really used. It's used by the banks. So this is if you want the real use case of the blockchain, that one is quite solid. The last question: uh, What was your biggest mistake with blockchain, if you had one? Yeah, I had one. Uh, yeah, initially. When my, I was first experimenting with the blockchain, I mm -hmm. was, it was very hard to create a go. I think the biggest problem is the fact that overusing that technology for some problems that you need. Okay, maybe I spot it that way, put it that way. Uh, if uh, you want to use blockchain in a way that you also additionally need to have a paper agreement in the real world, probably it's not worth <laughs> to use blockchain. And that was exactly what happened with Adobe Idea. If you have blockchain, but still you need to uh, sign some paper, uh, probably it's not a good blockchain use case. I will call it a good litmus paper. It's and more it like to me. Yeah. Car car carga cult, carga cult. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly carga cult in that situation. But uh, actually, uh, all those systems which attract uh, property assets, uh, for mm -hmm. instance, that your uh, flat belongs to you, they are actually tracked not in blockchain and they mm -hmm. would be faked. So uh, it's one of the use cases for blockchains to track uh, property rights. Uh, of, uh, Bancor, exactly. That was Bancor. That was one of the projects that uh, totally messed up because they were started. You, like I said, you don't want to put your property ownership on the blockchain that lost the fund due to, hack, due to hacking. So probably that's not the best idea. Uh, to that to happen, a lot of the uh, law, laws need to be introduced because uh, at as long as uh, it's not treated as a real contract agreement that is, uh, you can defend in the court, it's not worth to put that on the blockchain. I hope that after we have, we have a lot of uh, interesting happen things happening right now around the world. A lot of old industries, for example, in Poland you can create a bank account through selfie. And uh, finally you can do a lot of the uh, official uh, uh, things you need to go to the office and uh, be there in person, you are starting to do through, uh, through just post, uh, postman, things like that. So it's changing a bit. A lot of things were also moved to the internet. A lot of the uh, country level operation, for example, in Poland, they are talking that we'll be voting through the post uh, mail. So things like that also happening. Uh, I think the blockchain will be in, we will live in such a world longer period of time, I hope not, but the world needs to be prepared for putting even more things online. And I think the block, it will be a golden time for the blockchain because blockchain, what it's doing is really enforcing trust. Because yeah. you can trust something that happened in the web. So in the world that was shaken by the COVID and for the pandemic when people cannot yeah. just go and show that ID, probably the mm -hmm. blockchain uh, will find a lot of use cases. Mm -hmm. Yes, it might be uh, fast moving water in the crisis. Yeah. Nice idea. So that, that probably is something that can happen and uh, I hope it will happen later. Okay. Thank you, Arthur. Okay, nice thank you very much. See you too. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank bye -bye. you.